You might be asking how come the picture is so good, even though the room is so bright, and you have a light on. Well, I'm glad you asked. It's a common thought that a room needs to be dark in order to get a decent experience with a projector. However, with VividStorm's ambient light rejecting screens, this is no longer the case. VividStorm was kind enough to send me a screen at a reduced price. This is the 120 inch S Pro electric tension floor screen. Links in the description down below. When you get up close, you can see it's filled with small horizontal lines. Let me do an unboxing and after that we can get into it. It's very well packaged. Doing this alone is a challenge, but one of those nice things you don't mind spending the time on as you know it'll be worth it once it's all set up. When you get the chassis out, you see it's no joke. It's solid and feels like a premium product. And at this price point, it should, and it does. With the screen comes some documentation and your manual. You can pause here and use the period button to move frame by frame forward in the video. Going backwards, you can push the comma button. Also with it came screen sample pieces. Some were perforated samples if you want to put your speakers behind the screen. This is a USB drive. You can use it to program the screen to stop at different levels. There's also a white remote and a black one. A brush to clean the screen. As you can see here, it works pretty well. and the power cable. All right, let's get into the screen body. Here at the end of the cable is the receiver for the remote. The receiver cable is attached inside the chassis. It comes out from a hole and it's fastened to the chassis by a double-sided tape. So it's not to cause strain on the attachment of the cable inside the chassis. I have detached the cable from the adhesive because I needed a couple of extra centimeters to get the receiver where I wanted it to be. I put that tape piece there just to find the spot where it belongs once I put it back into its place. The vid screen would be smart to put a sticker on exactly the halfway of the screen. I found that would have been very helpful. Easy enough to put one there yourself, of course. Just saying. On the end of the chassis, you have your power cable input, your main power on off switch and the control switch. When turning on the main power, there is a sound indicating the main power is on now. The buttons on the chassis are the same buttons as on the remote control. And here on the bottom of the chassis are rubber feet. The smaller rubber pans at the end doubles as mounts if you want to attach the chassis to the ceiling. And here are some labels that appear on the sides. Let me turn the chassis around so you can take a look at the back. This is easier if you are two people. Thing weighs 32 kilos. That's about 21 pineapples in imperial units. Here are some specs. 
You can see the specs from the links in the description as well. It takes under 35 seconds for the screen to deploy. Inside is pretty much empty. On the left side, only holders for the screen. On the right side are the mechanics and the engine. The parts don't get very warm. Let's look at the infrared. As you can see here, it's been used a couple of times and the temperature doesn't get that high. The aluminium chassis keeps it cool. I did get it up to 34.7 later on the day. Here you can see my projector, the X Jimmy Aura, making some heat. Okay, let's get everything back to its place so we can take a look at the screen in action. Funny thing I want to show you here. There is a motion sensor of sorts, like a micro switch to protect the stuff inside. And it's quite sensitive. You can hear it activating only by me getting close to it cause the floor in my apartment is pretty shitty. I thought that was worth a mention. This is what it looks like hidden in the cabinet. And this is what it looks like getting it ready. I have a laser pointer that shows how much more light scattering the screen causes when aimed from below. And it really works hard reducing the light when it comes from above. A flashlight will show it more clearly. From below it's huge, but from above it disappears nearly completely due to the light rejecting tech. Here is what the image quality looks like. also with the light totally off and in dark conditions. With and without the screen. Of course, these video clips can't provide the real deal as one would experience in real life. It's way better than what it looks like in this video or any other video on YouTube for that matter. I will let you enjoy these samples with the screen and without, and with different light conditions. The screen can only accept ambient light from above. Too strong light from the side will affect the projection screen to a certain extent, such as light from windows that are on the side of the screen. Coming soon, a video where I choose the right cabinet from IKEA and build it up. Thanks for watching.
and maybe give a like and subscribe. I found this clock and screensaver channel on YouTube and I thought I'd give it a shout out. It's, it's pretty cool.